morning. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Ali Kiyapur uh, from Massachusetts General uh, Hospital in Boston. I'm the director of biomechanics uh, research. Uh, and I'm here with uh, Dr. Eli Massad. Hello, everyone. I'm Eli, I'm Dr. Ali Massad. I'm from the Massachusetts General Hospital, where I um, do research based on artificial intelligence and uh, spine. So yeah, the topic of, thank you for the introduction, the topic of today's uh, uh, session or uh, Ask the Expert, uh, expert is uh, at the applications of the artificial intelligence and um, spine surgery and improving uh, basically the methods for diagnostics and uh, treatments. So um, uh, my first question for you is based on the research um, uh, that uh, you do. So what do you see some of the emerging uh, to, uh, applications uh, in the area of using artificial intelligence in spine surgery research? Yeah, so first Ali, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I think the applications of AI are very diverse. Um, we've seen like applications for predict surgical outcomes. We have emerging applications uh, for computer vision, for robotics, uh, many emerging topic right now in large language uh, models. Mm -hmm. And um, also there is a lot going on with in silico uh, simulations. Okay. Uh, so I think the spectrum of applications is very broad. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see the, um, uh, the impact of AI on spine surgery to be very, to be tremendous in the coming years. There's a lot of research going on and I'm happy to like talk more about the work that we do at Harvard Medical School. So, can you please give an example of some of the most recent studies that you uh, did or you're doing uh, which uses artificial intelligence in the research? Yeah, so I think one of the studies we have right now is uh, using patient images. We think there's like so much data there um, that is usually overlooked. Mm -hmm. And uh, leveraging um, AI to analyze these imaging, we are doing our best to characterize like patients' phenotypes based on imaging, very objective measures different than physical or uh, subjective assessment that are usually done. And the idea behind that is we want to uh, define clusters of patients or group of patients that look much alike mm -hmm. and see what is the association between patients who look alike and their outcomes. So let's say we have a new patient coming in with their imaging and just like by analyzing them through AI, we would know if they fall like in a high risk group versus a low risk group. And we kind of get a sense of mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the path for this patient like after surgery. Okay, so basically what you're saying <clears throat> is, so you have the patient's information and then you try to train a model or build a model which can help you to predict the condition uh, of the patient. Yeah, this is exactly what we're doing. So we started with CT scans. So with CT scans, we were able to uh, segment uh, bo uh, bone mm -hmm. and muscles and also adiposity. So we're looking at the body composition overall mm -hmm. and uh, trying to uh, see uh, how these factors play to predict like surgical outcomes. There is a lot of uh, opportunities here, mm -hmm. adding bone density as a factor including like more biomechanical parameters, mm -hmm. more morphology of the bone, mm -hmm. and trying to be more specific about what is the segment of interest that the surgeon is, like where is okay. the index site for operation and having like an overall assessment of this using computer vision application and AI. Okay, so you mentioned that you use CT images of the patient. So is that the primary uh, set of input that you use to train your models or there are, you're looking also at some other uh, information such as the um, notes provided by the clinicians, doctors, or the like, you know, patient's baseline data and all that. So, yeah. So I think the CT scan has a lot of information. It's mm -hmm. a 3D um, image mm -hmm. uh, versus like an X-ray, which is just like a 2D representation. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a lot of data going there. The applications of NLP, natural language processing, using clinical notes, is also something very interesting. Um, there is a lot of um, applications to help mm. physicians write their notes, especially now with the emerging um, uh, LLMs, the large language models. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also there is a lot going on to create like decision support systems mm -hmm. based on um, the notes that are written in the EHR. Okay. So this kind of creating like alerts, for example, for 
post-operative complication, uh, let's say DVT, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that this like helps um, <clears throat> uh, spine teams taking care of patients to follow um, uh, good recommendation and practices. Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, combining combining like both is uh, or using like a multimodal approach to AI um, would be like most informative moving forward. Okay, perfect. So uh, initially you mentioned um, uh, I think an interesting uh, topic that uh, was basically use, uh, using artificial intelligence for a silicon model and that's basically what my area of expertise is because uh, one of the things that we've been trying to do uh, was that use the computational models uh, which represent a certain anatomy, in this case, spine, and validate the model and use that for uh, predictions and simulations of different uh, clinical conditions and spinal deformity cases and uh, disease cases, and also even for the treatment. So, but there's a process for that. So, I mean, typically, the process will start off with getting a set of images and then segmentation, so, and then uh, like, you know, bring into it a software for meshing and creating the anatomy and then defining the properties and details. And then the last step is the processing and simulation. So one of the biggest challenges in this area was so that uh, segmentations of the images. So, I mean, it's just, just a very lengthy process. It requires a lot of manual work to basically isolate the anatomy of interest and use that for basically creating a model. So. I think one of the very interesting areas in uh, uh, right now, and I think of just using artificial intelligence in this process is, so if the AI model can help us just to process uh, or pr extract the geometry much faster and quicker. And uh, so instead of like spending a lot of time building one model, so now we can basically use uh, this process and create multiple models. So and the model helps us to segmentate, uh, segmentize the uh, anatomy and build the model. So that's one area which I think which is uh, uh, very interesting and we're just trying to inv uh, investigate further into that. And also, uh, so like you know, in the spine uh, uh, industry and research field, so we are talking about patient uh, specific modeling. So in the past, so we had like, you know, uh, one, um, um, spine model validated against a set of cadaver data or uh, clinical data and use that for any kind of a spine research. But now we're talking about a model for a specific patients. So we build the model for the patient's anatomy and use that for predicting the basically outcome of the patient's spine into a specific treatment. So I just want to see what are your thoughts about these approaches and the advantages, I think, of AI in that field. Yeah, so I think you mentioned some great points. So uh, simulate, computational modeling and simulation um, is emerging very well in spine. Mm. Uh, we know a lot about it like in other industries, like aviation or uh, cars, for mm -hmm. example. Like people, they do simulate like worst case scenarios yeah. of crash. Um, I think, as you mentioned, like segmentation is a big hurdle. Uh, we are using new tools right now, trying to discover them. Mm -hmm. One of them was released by Meta, and mm -hmm. it's basically like segment like anything. And this is mm -hmm. like open source like model that we're trying to build upon to help segment mm -hmm. uh, uh, spine or uh, spine structures, yep. related structures. Um, this will help tremendously streamline the process. I think the main uh, roadblocks right now is um, ha uh, trying to upscale these applications, and make them easy for people to build um, these kind of like patient-specific uh, models. Uh, moving forward, uh, having more robust patient-specific models is definitely going to uh, be advantageous mm -hmm. to uh, predict like better outcomes, design better implants, yeah. and also prevent uh, complications down the road. Whether it's a complex case, it's an oncology case cases that need like complex reconstructions. Mm -hmm. um, th I think there's like a lot of um, advantages over there. Okay, yeah, exactly. And uh, I think one of the other uh, challenges in um, uh, stand, uh, standard procedure for spine surgery was like, you know, typically uh, people who end up having uh, spine uh, conditions are at the older age. And so at that point, so the biggest challenge is the bone quality, is it a good enough? So for a surgery, uh, like an you know, inner body fixation. So, and I think 
uh, there's not much information as far as, uh, okay, so how the patient's bone would react to like, you know, a standard spacer or cage. And so the subsidence, for example, as we speak, so it's just one of the biggest limitations. So where the bone is too soft and when you put the metal, the implant inside the space and it sinks into the bone over the time. So we just try to uh, avoid that. And I think the in industry has been trying to use the additive manufacturing tools and like, you know, methods for uh, printing different technologies by improving the morphology of the case. So to minimize the risk of subsidence. But here, I think at the research side, uh, what we can do is we can use build um, AI driven models. Uh, so which we can use patients own Im uh, like you know, images and data and build a model which gives us an estimate as far as the bone mechanics. And we use that to design a basically, or uh, like, can I help the doctor to design uh, a, K, uh, a construct for the patient, which has the lowest uh, risk of uh, failure or subsidence. Yeah, so I think you, uh, you mentioned it like very well. Uh, AI should definitely be coupled with other methods such as like additive manufacturing and 3D printing um, and trying to like leverage both techniques and uh, marry them together for better outcomes. Uh, so I think there's a lot of opportunities. Yes, uh, thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts uh, and experience with uh, our, uh, about artificial intelligence, spine surgery and research. Uh, so I think it will be very interesting to see uh, how some of these uh, basically um, um, researchers and all that yield to something which can affect the outcomes of uh, like a point of care and procedures. And ultimate goal is obviously to uh, make uh, the entire uh, procedure uh, less uh, costly and more efficient and it's like you know uh, relieves the burden uh, from the uh, healthcare side and also the patient make the procedures more effective. Thank you Ali, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you.